morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here is your detailed weather forecast update for Monday the 13th of October 2025. Wild severe thunderstorms through southeast Queensland last night, some of the rainfall even making it into Brisbane finally and there's been a couple of good reports of rainfall up to 75mm through parts of the South Burnett forecast district. There's more thunderstorms coming this afternoon and this evening and a bit more of an underground outbreak expected across parts of Brisbane and the Gold Coast with a wild, cha uh, wild card chance of some strong severe thunderstorms down there. Looking ahead we've got thunderstorms throughout Queensland and some rainfall up in the far north as well so a lot to get through in today's forecast update. If you're brand new to the channel please do consider subscribing but let's get stuck straight into things with a brief recap on what happened last night through parts of southeast Queensland. It was a cracker night for thunderstorms particularly between Kingaroy and Kilcoy. We had some wild thunderstorms, very dangerous thunderstorms actually with giant hailstones up to six centimeters in size. Supercellular activity through some of these thunderstorms as well. It wasn't as widespread or as extensive as I did once think so I apologize for that but uh, apart from from that the forecast played out exactly how I expected it so I'm not normally the guy to be saying I told you so but the forecast from Cyclone Tiles and the forecast from the forecast models was absolutely bang on and in fact for Brisbane it was better than what it actually turned out to be they missed the severe thunderstorms but they got between 5 to 15 millimeters of rainfall into the northern suburbs even Kabulcha which was looking like it was going to dodge everything actually ended up seeing something from it, these severe thunderstorms so very very good news indeed very very happy to see what happened last night some much needed rainfall, rainfall through southeast Queensland and like I said, up to 75 millimetres at Bellevue, I believe it was outside of Kabulchua. I'm not a uh, Kabulchua rather, I'm not 100% sure how much fell uh, in exactly what locations. But tonight we do have another chance of thunderstorms, and they could be strong ones indeed. We've got high convective available potential energy through southeast Queensland. But the one thing that's making me really doubt this forecast right now is the amount of cloud cover we're still seeing through the Brisbane and the Gold Coast area. The forecast models and even Bomber are very confident with some significant thunderstorms developing between Brisbane and down to the Gold Coast and they've also got the possibly severe on the forecast so you do know that they mean business but we've got lots of high levels of cloud moving into the southeast corner of Queensland and there is a little bit more still to come as well. Temperatures are rising fine but this high cloud will prevent the evaporation, it will prevent the surface heating and it will really throttle severe thunderstorm activity. It is starting to thin out, you can see a bit of a dry slot now starting to move in towards Toowoomba and Warwick. If this does get itself over southeast Queensland by about 9 30, 10 o'clock in the morning which is not a long way away, it's only about an hour away from when I'm recording this video, uh, we will start to see some potent severe thunderstorm potential, but we've only got like an hour or an hour and a half left of this cloud cover before the severe thunderstorm chances really do begin to diminish. But let's not talk about it too much. Let's talk about what we actually do have available for these thunderstorms today. We have high levels of convective available potential energy across a very small section of Southeast Queensland, inclu including for the Brisbane area. The levels have dropped a little bit from yesterday, but we've still got values here between the, one th uh, the 800 to the 1200 uh, type level and that will be enough to get these severe thunderstorms going. It will be enough to start some kind of outbreak. You can see maximum values up here around that 1,000 to 1,200 mark around the Brisbane and the Gold Coast area. A bit of a drop from yesterday's forecast, but still nonetheless healthy enough to get severe thunderstorms off the ground and into the air. But have a look at this, a massive dry slot in the middle of the environment. Now, I'm not one that normally knows a lot about thunderstorm potential, but I know when we have some wild severe thunderstorm potential on the forecast, we have a big dry slot in the atmosphere. And this is exactly what we're seeing on the atmosphere here, where the red line keeps going towards down on a steady uh, well the red line which is the temperatures keeps cooling steadily but the humidity or the dew point here uh, really drops suddenly and then increases again a little bit further up in the atmosphere that is a strong dry slot and again some good wind shear into the upper levels of the atmosphere a highly sheared environment this really does look like a half decent outbreak uh, a half decent uh, sounding for a severe thunderstorm outbreak so definitely something we're going to have to keep our eyes on quite closely and I mean if we do just have a look at the humidity values in this part of Queensland and drag it up through the atmosphere you can see on the lower levels we're looking at uh, some pretty decent humidity especially into the uh, kind of 850 hectopascal range we've got some very good humidity around southeast Queensland again potent fuel for thunderstorms and then that big dry slot around the 500 HPA range and then as we get a little bit further up in the atmosphere humidity does begin to return especially around the 200 to 250 HPA range again this might all sound like scientific ugly goo but that is a good setup for thunderstorms the convective available potential energy values could be a little bit better uh, at this point of time but still nonetheless less it will be enough to get these thunderstorms off the ground and going if we do see a reduction in the cloud cover through parts of southeast Queensland. Now the access convective forecast model for the Brisbane sector normally a very accurate and sometimes deadly accurate forecast model. You can see strong thunderstorms possible into the northeast of New South Wales. That's definitely where the best thunderstorm potential is but between Boona and out towards Bow Desert and the Gold Coast and around Narang we will also have some solid thunderstorm potential as well and I reckon between about 2 o'clock in the afternoon out to about 5 o'clock in the evening is a good win window for 
for some potential thunderstorms to develop. Now, if thunderstorms do develop in southeast Queensland and the northeast of New South Wales, they will be very isolated in nature. They're going to be small, they're going to be tight, but they could be quite strong. And especially considering the setup right now, they're likely to not drop too much rainfall, but we could be seeing large to even giant hailstones and damaging or even locally destructive wind gusts. Sort of similar to what we saw early yesterday afternoon at about 3.30, 4 o'clock with those thunderstorms developing around Kingaroo and Kilcoy up here, but this time they're going to be happening closer to the New South Wales Queensland border. In terms of what you can expect around the Brisbane or the Gold Coast area, very, very little by the looks of things. I think the chance of thunderstorms in the Brisbane area is very remote, probably lower than 10% at this point in time, and even north of Brisbane up around Cumbulture and uh, towards Bravi Island, the chance of thunderstorms is basically zero. The Gold Coast could see something, but again, I'm not really getting my hopes up in either way for these thunderstorms, and it, even with the eastern bear forecast, you can see there has been a pretty significant reduction in the thunderstorm intensity compared to where we were looking at for yesterday's forecast. So my take right now, if thunderstorms develop, they're going to be very isolated. And considering the cloud cover that we've got across southeast Queensland right now, I personally don't think thunderstorms are going to develop this afternoon and this evening in southeast Queensland, maybe one or two into the northeast of New South Wales, but definitely a day to watch. Thunderstorms also could develop along the Capricorn coastline and then into the uh, uh, southern parts of North Queensland, actually around Emerald and Dingo and Rolleston, we will see a couple of thunderstorms blowing up there this afternoon and this evening. Not likely to be strong ones. We will see some stronger and more widespread thunderstorm activity towards the west of Claremont and north of Longreach, out around Winton, Mutterborough, Jericho, those sort of locations. But at this point in time, nothing severe or nothing too crazy is expected. More convective and wild outback thunderstorms are possible around Mount Isa, but again, to a lesser degree than what we were talking about yesterday. Looking forward, we've got a widespread thunderstorm outbreak expected on Tuesday. This will be a classic outbreak slash North Queensland tropical thunderstorm outbreak, a lot of moisture surging in towards North Queensland. And this is an outbreak that we've been looking at for the last couple of week, uh, days. We're really looking at some widespread and some strong thunderstorm activity north of uh, Longreach and Mutterborough and then out towards Mount Isa and pretty much for everywhere in between right out to about uh, Charters Towers and Glendon closer to the Queensland coastline. But some big thunderstorms possible around McKinley, Maxwellton, Huendon, Mutterborough, Winton, even out towards Moran by Claremont, Jericho and Longreach. We could be seeing some strong thunderstorm activity for those locations as well through tomorrow afternoon and evening. Thunderstorms will spread a little bit further south through Wednesday. You can see thunderstorms back down into Queensland's Thunderstorm Alley, so around Charleville, Augathella, Injun, Roma, and then further south down around uh, Kanamala and Wyandra, and further out towards the west around Windora, Adavale, and Quilpe. A couple of isolated thunderstorms, most likely non-severe ones expected out here, and these ones again will likely have very little in the way of rainfall with them. Uh, Thursday brings thunderstorms closer to the New South Wales Queensland border, and some potential for some strong thunderstorms around Lightning Ridge, will get and more and then Friday we do have another outbreak of thunderstorms expected but this one's going to be over towards New South Wales and we could be seeing some widespread severe thunderstorm potential. I'll get to this one in just a few seconds because the southeast Queensland there is rumbles of activity on the forecast at least for Saturday uh, this coming weekend on the 18th of October. It has lined up with previous forecast modelling but you can see between the major forecast modelling here not too much in the way of crazy stuff is expected. Potentially further north up around the northern tips of the Sunshine Coast into the uh, south and the north Burnett forecast district and around the Fraser Coast. We may see some severe thunderstorm activity on Saturday, but this will be a bit of a day to watch. Uh, definitely a chance of thunderstorms, but at this point in time, long range models aren't overly favoring uh, strong, significant or widespread thunderstorm outbreaks and definitely nothing from Brisbane or the Gold Coast at this point in time. But pulling it back to Friday for New South Wales, I was actually made aware over on Facebook that we've got a big uh, that we've got big potential for thunderstorms on Friday the 17th of October, and this actually rounds out our high energy high energy period quite nicely. Now I'm really watching the Hunter region. We've got that mid-level dry slot that we just talked about over in uh, southeast Queensland coming through for today. That's going to favour severe thunderstorm activity through the Hunter region, especially. And you can actually see on the northern parts of this sounding here, up in the toppy uh, tippy top parts of the atmosphere, the impacts of that SSW event. Uh, now beginning to filter down into the atmosphere, which is going to keep things a little bit drier across southeastern Australia for the next couple of weeks. Now, this does throw a bit of a spanner in the works for this thunderstorm outbreak. I do expect the forecast, at least in terms of severity and extensiveness for this outbreak, to be dumbed down quite a lot in the coming week or so, especially as we get out to about Wednesday or Thursday when the forecast becomes a little bit more ironclad for these thunderstorms. Because right now, this is a very extensive outbreak for New South Wales. I mean, if you were just looking at this and taking it uh, uh, on face value, you'd be thinking, wow, this is 
Friday is going to be a cracker day for thunderstorms and definitely one that I want to be looking at very, very closely indeed. But I'm going to be saying, well, not so fast here. We will definitely see some strong thunderstorm activity on Friday and into Saturday, and that's most likely to occur around the Hunter region where thunderstorm potential around this time of the year is also really, really good. Through Sydney and out towards Penrith, we'll also likely see some strong or significant thunderstorm activity as well. And then widespread pulse thunderstorm activity expected to extend through other parts of New South Wales, right up towards the New South Wales Queensland border around Lightning Ridge, we'll get and uh, around Coonable and Moree, we'll likely see some good thunderstorm activity as well. But I would just like to say that considering the conditions right now, we've got great convective available potential energy values, but I just think this environment might not have enough moisture in it to really present the uh, uh, risk of a widespread severe thunderstorm outbreak. So we're going to have to watch this one very, very closely. But these are some insane Cape values, actually. I didn't actually look at this when I was researching this forecast update. 2,500, they are some big numbers for New South Wales. And if we do see Cape-driven thunderstorms, then we're going to see some really, really big ones. So that's for sure. And you can see this all filtering down towards Sydney and the Hunter region, where values are between 1,600 to 2,000. Very healthy stuff indeed. Friday, definitely a day to watch. But I reckon the forecast is going to get dumbed down a little bit, and the severity of these thunderstorms will be slowly reduced. But again, a very good week for thunderstorms lies ahead for Queensland, and that's going to all round off with a thunderstorm outbreak for New South Wales at the end of the week. Definitely a day to watch, that's for sure. And I'll have a lot more information on this over on the Facebook page. But apart from that, looking a little bit more long range, you can see it towards next week, thunderstorm activity does begin to reduce a little bit through parts of Queensland and New South Wales. And in fact, a bit of a return to rainfall on the forecast models. But again, with that SSW event fil filtering down into the atmosphere, into the mid-levels, I wouldn't be so quick to be sure about that uh, rainfall coming through. So whilst it does look good on the forecast right now, we're cautiously optimistic ahead of this rainfall. There are some good uh, accumulations possible through parts of New South Wales, particularly into the southeast, falls between 25 to 75 millimetres and even some ice Loaded totals up, to, uh, up towards 100 millimetres. But again, I would like to say just not so fast on this. The Matt Julian Oscillation is really expected to keep itself up into high gear around the 22nd or the 23rd of October as well. And that's going to bring some widespread rainfall to parts of Western Australia. And then that should ultimately end up in rainfall streaming in towards South Australia. But you can actually see, well, even with this widespread rainfall on the forecast, particularly around the 22nd and the 23rd over in WA, the SSW really throttles the rainfall's chances of making it in towards the Northern Territory and South Australia and then on towards southeastern Australia. Normally when we see heavy rainfall developing across the west coast of WA, the next place that it goes for is right through the central parts of WA and then in towards South Australia, New South Wales and into Victoria. And you can see absolutely none of that happens on this forecast modelling here. In fact, it gets trapped in central WA and the Northern Territory in South Australia. And that is again with that SSW event really throttling moisture levels in the mid-levels through parts of southeastern Australia, really struggling to get rainfall going for these parts of Australia, unfortunately. We do also have rumbles of activity on a tropical low, potentially around uh, the Kokos Keeling Islands at this time from the East Rebev. I would like to say take this with a very, very heavy pinch of salt. It is about this time of the year when tropical low activity does begin to start to get itself going, particularly offshore from WA, and especially that we're in a negative Indian Ocean dipole. This actually has a little bit more kind of uh, concrete to the forecast models compared to a tropical low over in the Coral Sea at this time of the year. And with both the East Rebev and the GFS now calling for a very weak spin-up to occur south east of the Cocos Keeling Islands heading towards the WA coastline. I would just like to say that this is now a little bit more likely than a 0% chance. But again, we're not talking about a tropical cyclone risk or forecast for the West Australian coastline. This could just be tropical low number three or number four for the season. I mean, they do form in this part of WA and they do form pretty frequently around this time of the year. And especially considering we are strongly in a negative for the Indian Ocean Dipole, I would like to say that this is a possibility. But if you start seeing people making cyclone forecasts over, particularly over on Facebook, but also here on YouTube, then uh, my advice is to block them because they don't know what they're talking about. And no risk to the WA coastline beyond maybe a few showers around the Exmouth or through parts of the Pilbara region. But again, definitely not something to be worried about at this point in time. That's going to do it for today's weather forecast update. There is lots to talk about. We've got plenty to get stuck into over the next couple of days, that's for sure, especially in the uh, thunderstorm side of things through New South Wales and Queensland. If you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. I don't do this for the numbers, but we are about to hit 50,000 subscribers. And if you haven't already now is the best time to subscribe getting in on the ground level so thank you so much to all of the support lately and all of the support that's ongoing as well and of course a special shout out to the channel sponsors and facebook supporters their names are on screen right now i could not run the show without them and of course their support is as always massively appreciated but that's going to do it for me today have a great monday have a great week and i'll catch you all in the next storm goodbye